35 and 19 now on the season. Your first place, Texas Rangers, the best run differential in all of Major League Baseball. <laughs> all right. So I was I was hoping that you would give me a little a throw over. Nothing. That was the throw over right there. All right, fine. The best run differential in baseball. And they've scored the most runs. There it is. This season in baseball through 54 <laughs> games. Um, and this offense has quite literally been the most explosive. I love this show. In I love the MLB. So yeah, because I was not going to pick you up. No, you was, were not. I was going to make you. <laughs> we had that whole uh, American Idol, you know, Diddy. Uh, what was the, the meme? I don't, know. don't Don't ask me what the other guy's name is. I, I have no, no idea. I, that's the funniest thing. I still have no idea what no, that guy's name is. Uh, <laughs> this guy's name, Mike Petrello, uh, writes for MLB.com, and he was detailing um, how the Rangers have become the highest scoring offense in baseball. It's from a few days back, so some of the numbers are from you know 49 games in the season as opposed to 54 for the Texas Rangers. But um, currently, I can tell you right now, the Rangers have 344 runs scored this season, which is a, a good eight more than the Tampa Bay Rays, making them, yes, the single best run scoring offense in baseball right now. Um, and so you look at the way that this team is playing right now, and it is fantastic, right? So third of the way through the season, and at least uh, I believe for let me see where am I? I didn't skipped around and forgot where I was, right? Okay, so it's one of the best um, run scoring seasons through this point in team history, right? And they've just gotten so far better than where they were last year. So um, in the thirty team era. Since 1998, when uh, Arizona and Tampa were added, no club in baseball has gone from bottom three to top three in run scoring within three seasons. All right, the Cubs went from wow. third worst to second best in 2006, 2008, like through that time period, right? And what? they went from 96 losses to 97 wins. The Cubs did. So that's the type of like change in performance that the Texas Rangers seem to be on pace for. So like, how does this happen? Right. Let's that's, that's the question, right? Um, the hitters, the hitters got better, right? Or not just the yeah. hitters got better. They got better hitters. Right. So like, that's the easy portion of this. You could point to all of the money that was spent in adding, um, Marcus Simeon, Corey Seager, but then also, like, we got to talk about some of these other guys on the roster, like Jonah Heim, Nathaniel Lowe, who was a silver slugger last year, Leody Tavares, who was batting incredible, uh, Adolis Garcia. They're all still on the club in addition to adding Marcus Simeon. Josh Young, who's come through, your, your, your guy, the young man. Um, Ezekiel Duran um, has been fantastic. Like, he looks like a legitimate because of the log jam that you have in middle infield and actually, I guess the third base, thanks to Josh Young, um, he'll look like just a fantastic utility guy for the time being, but they have just been incredible in that way. So like they've kept the right hitters and then helped them get better in addition, right? Cause Lowe and Taveras have been fantastic in getting better. And the funny thing is Adolis Garcia, when he came up as a rookie, he had the fantastic start kind of slowed a little bit and it was like, all right, is that a flash in the pan? And he has gotten even better this season. Obviously, he went on just a little bit of a slump over the last uh, few games, but he has been incredible even uh, year over year for him. So, like, we talk about the ways that they've jumped all the way across. Um, also, in extra innings, when we were talking with Chris Blake, who was a pre- and post-game host today, one of the things that he said, I don't know if you remember this, is their, um, the way that they hit with runners in scoring position. So as of the highest batting average of runners in scoring position, or sorry, not batting average. Let me go with OPS, right? A little bit better metric of the offense. Um, since 1901, excluding the shortened season in 2020, the best, the 1930 Yankees with a 923 OPS. You want to guess who the best, the second best was? That's right. Your 2023 Rangers with a 920 as of a few days ago. The second best OPS runners in scoring position. That's a great way to get offense, right? Like when when you have them there, set them up, knock them down. Yeah. Um. And what's funny is like that that would that's the big thing, right? You can't say that like oh well they're just hitting a whole bunch of homers. Like 
as a few days ago, they were ninth most homers in the league, which is, I mean, good, but it's not something where you go, well, there's the, there's the, um, there's the smoking gun, right? League average strikeout rate. So it's not like they're striking out less than everybody else. Um, ground ball rate is pretty good, but not incredible, right? Like they stolen bases. They're like middle of the pack. This has really just been a, they have been hitting well at the right time when they get the runners in scoring position. They are doing that. A little bit of good luck also considered here. How does that sound to you? It sounds incredible. I mean, to your point, just to give you an example, in using tonight's game, your four and five hitters in Adolis Garcia, who you had mentioned, you know, have been scuffling a little bit as of late. I mean, he goes four for five tonight, has three runs scored himself. Josh Young goes three for five with three runs. You got the two run home run tonight as well. So your four and five hitters go a combined seven of ten. That's good. In the lineup. If you've got the heart of your order putting together those kinds of numbers, not to mention, you know, hitting what over 330 with runners in scoring position this year, you're giving yourself a chance not just to have to rely on the home run, but to be able to play good, sound, fundamental baseball where you're getting runners over, you're playing situational baseball, and then you're allowing your boppers in your lineup to do what they do best, which is knocking guys. And now we're talking about a bunch of crooked innings, which we've seen throughout the course of the season so far for this offense. It all flows and works together. Right. And you give this offense a lot of credit for the patience that they're showing at the plate, but more importantly, taking advantage of opportunities when they are there and they're doing it better than anybody in Major League Baseball Interesting right that you mentioned patience at the plate. Let me go to the text line real quick. Again, the number is 877-881-1053. From the 817, the manager change is definitely a factor. The players will fight like lions for him. I think that that's part of it. I also was always, I mean, Bruce Bochy is a dude that is accessible to analytics, but he's a little bit more of an old school guy, right? Like there's going to be some feel. And I wonder if some of this has changed the Rangers approach, right? So there's the luck portion of it that I'm sure has some part of to do with it. But the Rangers are also the second best team, at least of a few days, uh, as of a few days ago, when it comes to two outs. They're also the second best team batting when it comes to two strikes. Like their approach is Teflon when you get to these instances where we've seen of late in baseball where you kind of get these give ups, right? You get guys just kind of swinging in nothingness or sometimes taking a pitch because it's not a pitch that they feel like they can, you know, really launch into the stratosphere, right? The discipline of this of these Rangers batters is to be commended. I mean, there's a perfect example of that. I mean, you think about Jankowski and the double that he had. I mean, these guys are hitting well with two strikes. They're battling when they're down in counts and they're making pitchers work for everything. And that's what you want from a lineup here is the ability to make pitchers go deep into counts, battling at the plate, fouling off pitches, but more importantly, giving yourself the best opportunities to see the pitch that you want to see to hit. And the Rangers are are doing that. So all, can, I, can I add yeah. one more thing on top of yeah, that? Because yeah, yeah. the, the approach has been great, but like also the approach in this way. Um how about the percentage of batted balls that are liners or low flies, right? Because one thing that we've talked about in baseball a lot is we, you know, people kind of decry the analytics movement is the launch angle and everybody wants to try and hit a home run. When the bases are empty, Texas, uh, their percentage of batted balls that are, you know, kind of just liners was 39%, about 21st in the league. When runners are in scoring position, that jumps to 45%, which is third best. So like when it's, when it's time to get runners in, they're not trying to hit homers. They're trying to knock them in. So in addition to, you know, two, two strike, two out hitting, you know, making sure that you make get a uh, bat to ball. They're also making sure they get back to ball and go for contact and maybe not necessarily power. Get them in, right? Put the ball in play. Put the ball in play. Get on the base pads. Like, that has been the fun part about it for this Rangers. It's almost, I don't want to say a throwback old school perspective because that feels a little bit over overwrought. But it's just been a wildly effective approach. Just do the things that feel like sensible baseball, you know? Well, I mean, any good lineup puts pitcher, pitchers to pressure. And what I mean is making pitchers go deep in counts, ensuring that you're finding the quality pitches that you want to hit. But then when you get on base pass, finding ways to not only put the ball in play, but now you're putting pressure on the entirety of the defense to make plays constantly over and over and over again which can lead to mistakes being made by defenses, and then you taking advantage of them 
with your ability to run bases and knock in runs. And I think for the Texas Rangers, the completeness in which their offense is playing with right now is a testament to their approach, as you've been detailing there. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, the influence that this manager is having on their abilities to be professional players every single day. The examples of Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, mixed in. They've got a really nice blend of veterans and young players here who are knowing exactly what their roles are and they're playing them out for the most part consistently on a daily basis. That's the makings of a really, really good ball club when everyone knows their role but understands what they have to do from an approach standpoint from plate appearance to plate appearance. There. Shout out to DJ Dog 31 on the YouTube. It says every night it's someone else coming up big. Last night it was Seeger with a four RBI and then Heim with four RBI tonight. Yeah. Or to, yeah, tonight. And I mean, it really is just a fantastic effort because it's, again, throughout this piece, and again, shout out to Mike uh, Petriello of MLB.com. It's, it's a whole bunch of things. And of course, like, like I mentioned, luck is part of it, but it feels like there's not one singular thing that's making this offense so great. It is a full range, an array of things for these Rangers. In addition to being it, everybody, uh, it's, it's a full uh, team effort in a way that it, that seems obvious, right? Oh, it's good. If you're going to be good, it's going to be a team effort. But no, they're showing it on like the most basic of levels, talking about the hitters one through nine. You know, and so because Leonardo Tavares was toured in the month of May, yeah, uh, he was fantastic. That's right. And as to the point of the five seven three, you know, Tavares is your ninth place hitter, so you're getting contributions up and down this lineup. And if you're Bruce Bochy, you're looking at a lineup that has got a lot of depth to it, right? Which uh, which gives you options, <laughs> which, right? And you're you're getting back Mitch Garver, who you who is like a yes. really good hitter. Like these are the things, and going through this writing, going through like this research has made it so that I look up and I go, okay, the idea that maybe, you know, you are not going to have the best of luck at times, it still makes me believe like what is, I believe I saw here on the text line from the 817, truly convinced when DeGrom gets healthy, this team is one true closer and an outfielder away from true a true and deep World Series win. And I'm not ready to do that just yet, just because I feel like I'm setting myself up. Yeah, I'm not something. ready to go all the way just yet. But the point that I want to make is, looking at the ways that this offense is being good and looking at the ways that they still have some things to fix, but they have the opportunities to fix it, it makes me feel comfortable that this, this offense isn't a flash in the pan. It's going to be some level of consistent and that they can really ride this along with their starting pitching. And hopefully once they get to the opportunity to make trades, you know, fill in some of those holes in the bullpen to the point where you have an opportunity to not just be good, but have an opportunity to be great and maybe contend for a World Series. I like what you started to get to there is the idea of sustainable play yes. and the way that they are playing. This is a sustainable method to win ball games. Scoring with runners and scoring, getting hits with runners in scoring position, quality up and down the lineup, and now hopefully the bullpen will be able to come along, at least for tonight anyway. Shout out to Mr. Anderson. Grant Anderson. Seven strikeouts in two and two thirds innings, picking up Martin Perez, who struggled tonight, but it was the offense that was the story, along with Mr. Anderson himself. Your Rangers are playing fabulous baseball right now, 35 and 19 through 54 games, their best start in franchise history. We are now officially one third through the Major League Baseball season, and your Rangers are one of the best teams in all of Major League Baseball.